Hi everybody, it is Dawn, Twin Hearts Ablaze. Welcome. This video is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Uh, there is one thing that I will share toward the end about the month of May and some things that we can expect energetically um, during um, the middle of the month. So I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but I was just guided to just be very conversational in this video to do it inside. This is my um, little sacred space uh, in my room that I have right now. And just to share with you a little bit about my own uh, journey at this point and a little bit about um, little a few snippets uh, from various things. Um, I was actually guided to start with uh, by, call in, uh, by calling in Mother Mary. And I'm going to just quickly draw one card from the Mary Queen of the Angels deck. Um, this is uh, something that I frequently will just draw one card a day. And here we go. Okay. Let me see if I can show it to you. Give me a second. It is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Whatever I am most passionate about is the direction I follow. Wow, that one's for me. Maybe for some of you out there, enthusiasm pertains to what I'll share about him and um, or he, she, um, and enthusiasm. Okay, well, I'll just start right there then. Uh, I have um, since, so I shared the Easter video, and uh, shortly before I uh, did the Easter video, um, I had recorded a three-hour video, not intending for it to be three hours, but um, it was some really um, amazing messages came forward. Unfortunately, the video was corrupt, and I lost it. And I still haven't discerned if that was uh, because the time wasn't right to share all that was in that video or if that was some sort of interference. Um, it, that happened uh, shortly before... I shared the Easter message um, so uh, after the equinox and before Easter um, Sunday. So uh, I just I don't have a lot of clarity around that, um, and uh, unfortunately I don't really remember the detail of everything that did come through. I was just in a, such a state of grace when I recorded that, and um, so I just I wanted to share that, and I wanted to say that this enthusiasm. Uh, and follow your passion. That has been brought into my awareness again and again and again and again. And as a matter of fact, one of the reasons I am making this video um, is because I've been really since the first of this year, end of December 2017, first of this year um, until now, um, but several times rather um, persistently. Um, I've been, you know, just had a strong sense that um, I need to just there, I need to speak. Actually, Archangel Michael came in a dream once and, um, and was very, he got them, let's just say he got the message through to me in a very unique way, like, I need to speak and, um, and I need to speak, just share some of um, my own um, process and, uh, and related to passion and enthusiasm, that takes me right, that leads me right into it. Um, because, you know, sometimes what I've been experiencing um, is sometimes our passion and our enthusiasm, um, it, it can, we can allow ourselves to dim that when it is not met with interest from others and or with uh, understanding um, from others or even uh, um, an awareness of what it is um, that we are bringing forward um, or offering. Now that can happen in the context of uh, the sacred partnership dynamic, uh, whether you are in physical uh, communication and contact or not. Um, it, it still can happen, uh, I believe anyway, at the um, 5D higher levels. Uh, there for some of us, not for all. Um, there, there can be points at which we are called to speak or to share, and um, because we feel lost or you know bewildered or otherwise, um, uh, um, 
are not able, or some in my case, are not able to articulate it um, just yet because there is no language. There is no language for some of the things that there are to, there there are to share and articulate. And that when that is your passion, um, to to basically share as much as you know how. Um, but some um, and okay when that is your passion and there is this um, either outside interference or a um, an, in, in a, incapacity in your present form or state to be able to share it fully um, you just have to keep you know keep at it and keep trying and it's a messy process and that's really the story of my life um, and uh, you know, at times I, I try to share through painting and at times I try to share through my writing and, and my books. At times I try to share through, um, you know, my walks and um, and by being present with nature. And at times I, I try to share by simply doing my own healing process and allowing what wants to be born to be born. And um, at the same time, you know, what I have found is that... Um, that always brings great joy and peace to be on the way. For me, it's all about being on the way um, and to to share as best we know how um, and to show up fully um, in, in, in the full joy of who we are and to celebrate ourselves and the journey and to celebrate the other um, and to really life as communion, the model uh, for me, the, the model of uh, communion is a very beautiful one, you know, to, to break the bread and offer it, to share the cup and to sit at the table. Um, it's a blessing. And at the same time, this card that we drew, enthusiasm, when I think about that, I think about how there have been... Um, times when my enthusiasm, uh, I've got a lot of it, but there are times when it takes a nosedive. And so maybe there's something there for us all to consider. Um, and maybe that's what Mother Mary was um, wanting to wanting to draw to our attention. And I'm, what I'm hearing right now is that, yeah, is that when we feel that we are ill-equipped, as I've been talking about that, um, this, this word right here, imagine, imagination, curiosity, play. When we return to the natural state of our childlike wonder and we allow ourselves to simply be present with ourselves as we seek to express, um, as we seek to come fully to our lives and live in full expression. The presence to the process is, an, is a, a large part of the offering to and the service that we are offering to humanity. Oh, she's reminding me. Okay, hold on a sec. I have, okay, oh my goodness. <laughs> she's totally falling apart. Hold on just a sec. Let me... Okay, this, oh my goodness, go back to here, let's see, this is Magda, and I made her uh, many years ago, 2012, I think, summer of 2012, um, and <laughs> she's really, <laughs> she's a little doll that I made at a retreat that I was at, and um, I... All of these things are symbolic, you know, her hat's falling off now and her, her rainbow hair here is, is all a mess. Um, and she's wearing these sunglasses because, you know, always felt as if uh, I were flying blind through the, through the world. She's got her drum and a staff. And Mary's just reminding me that um, it's just fine that she's all a mess because I remember the creation of her um, in 2012. Um, and I remember the, the symbols and what each one of these means. She's got her hair held bad here. Little memories, the little lion and 
Yeshua, of course, and um, this, this crazy uh, orange fabric that at one time was like, it was literally like a train that went on forever. So um, what Mary is saying is that um, when we allow ourselves to show up in the moment with enthusiasm and when at the times when we lose our connection to that enthusiasm, we just simply know that we are held and we hold. Um, we hold not only the creations that we might have done, you know, the, the doll or the, the painting or other uh, writing that I might have done or a poem or, you know, whatever, in whatever way you express yourself, a conversation. Not only that we, we hold that and, and we are held in the, with the creation, but also that that we are holding our own uh, lives and cradling the creation. That's a beautiful image. That's a beautiful image. And, and that there is a natural enthusiasm uh, in, in the process of being present. So... One of the things that um, I wanted to share is um, back to Michael and Mary having been with me um, often was um, a poem I wrote on January 1st or December 31st, possibly. Um, it's called Michael, Mary, and Me. Oh, it was written the day after Christmas, actually. Um, Michael, the archangel, and Mary, Mary, my mother, his mother, your mother, our mother, both have been holding me so close, guarding me and guiding me, carrying me, telling me they will take me to where I'm meant to be, even if I have collapsed here, so close to the place where we meet again, begin again here at the end. I have been crying because for so many years I have stood strong, knowing in the longing for even I belong. No matter all the cutting off from everyone and every place that mattered to me, now I am a babe, born again into this love, and still alone while you roam, and still unable to bring forth all the love that rushes through. Asking the angels, where are you who promised me so very long ago that if I held strong and kept my pledge, they would bring support I need. Now all has fallen in, all has fallen through. I have fallen down and out and back into the arms of grace eternal waiting place. So Mary is holding us in that waiting place. And in a sense, it is an eternal waiting place. Um, that, But it is a place where much is happening. So it appears as if we are simply in a holding pattern sometimes. And that this, this relates to what I was just saying about you know, bringing forth and sharing our gifts and our creations and uh, the ways that we express ourselves and when we don't feel that we can maintain enthusiasm or passion. Um, because, you know, almost all of us who are called to this path of sacred partnership have experienced moments where it's just, you know, just want to fold because there's just no, there's not only no enthusiasm, there's really no energy left. And we are always replenished from within, from the light and the life and the love that we are as one with God. You know, Emmanuel, Jesus' name means God with us, God with us. And Mary, for me, Mary and Archangel Michael are um, representations of God's presence with us, as is the Holy Spirit, which I will talk about in just a bit. And... Um, So I'm talking a lot of here about presence and, you know, I suppose that that's, that's really been close to my heart. Um, I have personally had to, or chosen to, um, because it was, it was past time to make some choices and, and, and decisions. Um, and I'm getting ready to make another big one and it's, again, goes back to this sort of um, feeling that not certain what's what's happening or where we're headed or where I'm headed um, or 
and I, you know, there can be um, a tendency to pull back and not, uh, not act. But you know, in my experience, that is never, um, that is never the fullest expression of who I am. To simply, you know, maintain a holding pattern. Um, and so, even though there is a sense of um, waiting for results or, or you know, seeing where following the passion is really, when is it going to come to fruition? Um, there, there's a, you know, again, that just what's coming to me is there's, you know, it's, it's in, in process and we are being held through it all. You know, Mary and Michael, the archangel, both have been holding me so close, guarding me and guiding me, carrying me, telling they will take me to where I'm meant to be. And I trust that. I really do. Okay, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I think I'll tell you about the painting. The painting that you see here is one that means a lot to me. Uh, I painted it in Taos, New Mexico in June of 2016, so almost two years ago. And the figure that emerged, it, it started out as very different painting, but then I quickly just followed the guidance of spirit and it completely changed. And the figure that really wanted to emerge, it, it seems ancient. Um, and the carrier of a gentle wisdom yet to be revealed. And as I wrote in the description for the painting, I said, she or he awaits the approaching moment of revelation. There is a new truth being prepared, a radiant realization desiring to come forth. A new understanding of love is being born of time and all will benefit from this gracious redefinition. And that's really what uh, I have sought to talk about for the last couple of years, at least um, somewhat on this channel with the Sacred Partnership series is, you know, what is that radical redefinition of relationship? And I have done that through the lens of the teachings of Jesus and what Yeshua has, you know, shared with me directly in terms of conversations that I've had with him about, you know, what is the intention of sacred partnership? What are the qualities? What's the purpose? What's it all about? And he shared, um, indeed, a gentle wisdom um, with regard to that. So, um, this painting to me, it, it's called, uh, through all the years you stood by me. And as I mentioned, it's, it's just really special to me in, in ways I can't really describe again, go, circling back to what I started this video with. Um, I don't know all of what it means. You know, sometimes I look at it and, and I do see Jesus and other times I look at it and I see what's, you know, I would imagine, you know, my Syrian starseed lineage, I'm just guessing there, I have no real def definitive information about that. Uh, other times I look at it and I see well into the future and what, you know, the new earth will be like when we walk together in peace. And sometimes I look at it and I see such love and compassion and like that gentle spirit of Mother Mary, um, holding us. And, you know, what do you see? I'm curious what, what you see. And who has stood by you through all the years? Who has been with you? I think that this is a time where we're being asked to really be aware of that um, in new ways. I'm also reminded um, by the painting and by my experiences the last several weeks of Jesus' promise um, shortly before the crucifixion and resurrection uh, when he was with the disciples um, teaching those last precious weeks. And, you know, he said, if you love me, keep my commands. And he said, I will ask the Father and he will give you an advocate. He will give you an advocate to help you, to be with you forever, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. And Jesus said, you know, to those that he was sharing this gift with and foretelling the coming of the Holy Spirit, you know, he said the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and he will be in you. And this was the promise. Um, 
This was the promise. There would be a comforter, an advocate, the Holy Spirit. And I felt that presence very much in all the uncertainty. Uh, as I alluded to, I've had to make some different decisions and one is pending um, and I had to, you know, do a couple of um, medical health related things and um, some other things going on in family dynamics and the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, you know, Emmanuel, Jesus' name, Emmanuel, God with us. God is with us. So I feel like I'm somber today and I'm not sure that I'm, and that's intentional. So forgive me if it's coming across a little bit um, disjointed or otherwise um, serious. I am, I am a, a little bit in that sort of a space um, in the last couple of days for myself. Um, and I do think that that is, um, just a part of the process, a part of the unfolding. So I want to tell you a little bit about May. Let me just go ahead and shift to that and I'll, I'll leave that um, um, May. So oh, I was asked to share one more thing, which is when I was in Ireland and France, I found a bunch of skulls and uh, on my walks and other stones or rocks. This particular one is um, really, really meaningful to me. Um, and those are, they're gifts. They're gifts from life. And there are signs of the presence, signs and wonders along the way. The Holy Spirit. In, in May, we're going to, you know, the, the energies that are coming in are accelerated right now. A lot of light energy flooding um, the planet. Um, and um, we're entering into um, a sacred season. And 40 days um, after Easter, um, which this year is May 10th, Thursday, May 10th, is Ascension Thursday. This is the ascension of Jesus. And as I've spoken about before, and I'll link to that video, um, Jesus came because he showed us how to live and, and he showed us, you know, how to walk with God and how to, to be, become aware that God is with us and God is in us and that the kingdom of heaven is here and now. It's not something we wait for. It's here and now. And this does circle back to that enthusiasm message as well. So May 10th is the date of the Ascension. And that's 40 days after Easter. And then May 20th, 10 days later, is Pentecost. Now Pentecost is the day that the Holy Spirit descended uh, to the early disciples who were left after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. So 10 days after the Ascension was Pentecost, and Pentecost was um, a prominent feast um, that it's a feast that celebrates um, in Israel the, um, it, the law, the giving of the law um, on Mount Sinai. And it, today, you know, Pentecost is known because of what happened on that Pentecost uh, many, many years ago. And I think that I will, it also means um, 50th day because it's 50 days from Easter Sunday. So 10 days after the Ascension Sunday, or Ascension Thursday. Um, and so I think I'll read to you, let me just pull that up here, um, from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. 
Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all you who lived in, live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited to, by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest in hope because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. David died and was buried, but he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we were all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise, This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted the message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. Sorry, I got emotional there. Um, you know, the reason I get emotional is because 
The image of communion is very holy and sacred to me, and it is one of the few things that has survived for me um, in this life. Um, my own experiences in terms of uh, the church and uh, and various other um, groups and things that are done in the name of Christianity that just break my heart and and I believe Jesus would have nothing to do with but communion the breaking of the bread and the offering it to the world the pouring out of the Holy Spirit and the rivers of miracles that are made possible when we come together and love one another with a love without condition. This, these are the signs and wonders that are here and now in our world. After I painted the painting here, um, through all the years you stood by me, I, I wrote uh, one of my essays from the edge and it was about unconditional love. Um, it said this, some of us are always trying to get it right. We spend our lives trying to account for wrongs done and become ready for the reconciliation. We figure if we just get clean enough, then we can go to meet our brother. We are wrestling with God. Others of us run around picking up new and interesting blindfolds to shield us from the piercing ray of light that might remind us of the truth we long, long for but are afraid to know. Somewhere inside, we all know it comes back to love. That love is who we are. Still, we aren't sure we are deserving. Or we cannot bring ourselves to submit to the radical restructuring required by reorienting ourselves to that love. We look for a bigger flag, cleaner, whiter, brighter, so the one we think we've wronged might see we really mean it. But there is no wrong, and there is no need of a white flag where there is a heart rooted in the love we are. We think we are not ready, so we repeat replicating patterns of self-loathing and shame, all the while covering them up and presenting the picture of perfection to the world. We exhaust ourselves in a game of good enough, checking off boxes and reducing ourselves to a thing unrecognizable. You are welcome to the table, just as you are, where you are. I will meet you there. There is no surrender required. This is much the message that um, the one who has stu stood through all the years by me and, th and through all the years by you, you know, that one for me is, is the Christ. Um, and for me, very connected with the, the person that was Jesus, the Christ, here on earth 2,000 years ago and who still walks with us and who still teaches us through the ministry of reconciliation of the Holy Spirit how to love. And that love is an offering that, that he is always presenting to us when we enter into his presence with whatever choices and decisions we have, with whatever uh, failings um, or shortcomings we have, with whatever the past has looked like and with however the future appears to be and with what is right now in this moment. He invites us to a table in the wilderness and the Holy Spirit is poured out upon us and nothing is required but a willingness to receive an open heart. offering of our lives. And that's what May, May is about. There, um, it seems to me, from what I'm shown, that there, there is a, a, a sacred turning, um, you know, another sacred turning in the big sacred turning, and um, there is an opportunity to receive at deeper and deeper levels. And requires us to keep our hearts open and to maintain a connection to the passions of our of our lives and of our hearts and our, our souls truth and radiance 
and to lean into that enthusiasm without making, uh, making it a forced thing because it must be an authentic offering of enthusiasm. And um, it must come from the deepest part of who we are. I don't have it in front of me, but there uh, is a um, a pa core passage in um, my Cultivating Essence book series, um, also the 90 Days to Life journey that I share um, that talks about the river of miracles and how it, it flows forth um, only from a single choice to believe. It talks about how we have wandered. We think we have wandered in a desert for so long. Um, and then one day, we look up and see the stars, and there is the single choice to believe. And out of that, all things are made possible. And all things are indeed possible. Um, for me, that comes through that relationship with Christ. And even when I don't see the way, I am not alone and you are not alone. We walk together. And regardless of what happens, you know, I want to share another story. You see this drum back here. I really um, wanted to, um, this drum was, this, the symbols were very meaningful to me, and it came from a, a, a healer that I worked with. And um, she gave me this drum, and it was just a major um, uh, moment for me. And when I got on the plane to come back, um, and we were, you know, somewhere at a high altitude, the, the drum split. And I was devastated because... It was at a very vulnerable time in my life. It was the time when I said yes to this, what I was asked to do with this five-year period between 2012 and 2017. Um, it, it was uh, started on 11-11, um, 2011, 11-11-11, um, and then this was in December of that year. Um, and when it broke, I, I was devastated. I just was... You know, like I couldn't believe that it had it snapped. I heard it happen, um, and I remember her saying to me, "Oh, well, you'll you'll sing through the drum, you know. Ooh, you'll sing through the drum." And I've done that a few times. Um, but my reason for sharing that is what what God has taught me through the years is that you know this drum is like one one example um, of many things that hasn't quite gone like I might have, you know, wanted it to. Um, and through it all, there's life. There's life pouring through this crack in the drum. <laughs> there's life poured out. There's life poured out in when you know when we have a great triumphant moment um, and things really come together and there is life poured out when the opposite is our experience there's always life poured out and that's very much what um may um is is about it's about a close presence um and it's about communion and community and coming into unity and standing by one another uh, both in terms of um, the larger collective in terms of those of us called out um, to lead the way in terms of modeling love without condition and um, also just in our daily lives you know as we are choosing when we feel that we are wandering in the desert, when we feel this sort of experience, that's not my painting, by the way, that is my friend Darlene's beautiful painting. But when we feel that we're wandering in the desert alone, 
to just remember that we have been given a comforter, a spirit of compassion to guide us and to bring us back home to ourselves, back into unity within, and to hold us in grace and to be present to our process and to celebrate with us when we are able to open up and be in a spirit of enthusiasm and walk forward in our lives with, cor with courage and with grace. So I know I've been very reflective and um, wandering a bit in this video. I hope that there's been something here um, for you. And uh, if not, thanks for listening to, to me um, ramble on. I look yeah. back at that and I, I see how, you know, my view, my perspective was so limited. And that's where, you know, when I look at this painting and when I remember the vast beauty of how we are supported in all things and the mystery, the revelation of a mystery, just like on that Pentecost day where the Spirit came and settled on each one of them and they had many differences among them, even the tight-knit group of disciples and they were not all in agreement. And there was yet, in the midst of all of that, this beautiful outpouring of grace. That's what we're in store for. I don't know how it will happen, um, but I do know that all is not lost when it comes to a greater outward, outward expression of unity and that that can happen in the course of each of our lives as we simply step forward and at times when we are um, feeling frail or unable to um, embody the enthusiasm uh, to which we are called um, then we are held and we are not alone and we are able to step forward and, and to trust that when we look for the stars, all manner of miracles will be made manifest in our lives. I think I'll stop there. I just really appreciate you listening. Um, much love to you and have a beautiful and blessed remainder of April and into May. Much love.